let us create a dreamy autumn landscape scene using Lightroom Classic. As always, feel free to follow along by downloading the raw files from the link in the description of this video. And now let's jump into it. So since the light conditions of this scene are quite harsh with the highlights on the left side and the deeper shadows on the right, we want to first merge an HDR out of that bracketed series you can see down below. This is very important in order to keep the image quality high, so let's do that. You want to select all the images of that bracketed series and then right click, go to Photo Merge and choose HDR. Lightroom will give you a little preview, but you don't have to change much here. All I'm doing now is to just hit the Merge button. We will then end up with this HDR file, which has a much bigger dynamic range than the other single RAW files. Well, so what we want to do in here is, first I think we need to crop the image slightly. The horizon is a little off in this case, so I want to fix that. Just rotating the image a little bit, I think right about here looks good. With this out of the way, we can work on the basic adjustments. So let's open up the basic panel. Right away, I do want to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape just to bring up the saturation and also brighten up the darkest parts slightly. We can then work on the white blends. At the moment, you can see this image has a slightly colder look to it. I don't think it's fitting for a dreamy autumn scene. So what I want to do here is to slightly raise the temperature without making the yellow color cast too obvious. Right about here looks good. Now for the exposure, as I said earlier, the left side is very, very bright since the sunlight is coming in from this side. However, we also have some very deep shadows in the image, which kind of looks unnatural for a daytime shot. So next up, let me raise the exposure to fix that. And while I raise the exposure, I'm just focusing on the shadows of the image. So right about here looks good for the shadows. We still have a little bit of underexposure going on, right down here in the tree. This area is not that important. Still, I want to fix it by bringing up the blacks, just getting rid of that underexposed spot. Now, another benefit of bringing up the blacks is we're basically reducing the contrast. And by reducing the contrast in that way, we are creating a softer look. So instead of having harsh light with lots of contrast, we are reducing the contrast and creating softer light which is very, very important if you want to create a dreamy scene. Exposure wise, the histogram looks quite good, but you can see the highlights are completely blown out and we don't want that. So since we are working with an HDR file, we can simply bring down the highlights all the way. And as we are restoring details from the sky, we can now actually see the clouds, which is exactly what we want. At this point, I then want to raise the whites, making the scene overall a little brighter. I'm keeping a close eye on the histogram because I don't want to overexpose anything at this point. And then we can try bringing down the shadows a little bit. By doing this, we are going to increase the contrast, but we're also going to add a little more depth to the image. Exposure wise, this scene looks quite good already. What I want to do as well is to bring up the texture just a little bit. And then for the soft dreamy look, what we can do is to bring down the clarity quite a bit. And I'm also going to bring down the dehaze. This makes it look like there was an autumn glow effect applied, but we didn't actually use Photoshop. So that's a very, very easy and cool effect to apply on your images. Now keep in mind, bringing down the dehaze will make the image brighter, but so far looking at the histogram, there is no issue here. So one more thing I want to do with the basic adjustments is to just bring up the vibrance, giving the image some more saturation. And that's it for the basic adjustments. So we went from the image on the left to the image on the right. Not that much has changed except for the colors and a little bit the exposure. You can see it in the shadows and in the very bright highlights. Now the bigger changes will come when we target things locally. And for that, as always, we are going to use masks. So let's head into the masking panel. And right away, I want to work on that glowing soft look. What this means is I am going to create a radial gradient covering that bright side on the left of the image. 
right about here. I'm going to place the center right on the edge of that photo. And what I want to do with this radial gradient is I want to bring up the blacks, introducing more glow. This looks wonderful. We can make this effect stronger by bringing down the dehaze. This will brighten up the area and in this particular spot it will probably introduce some overexposure but I think this glowing part just looks way better this way. So let's drop the dehaze quite a bit here for a very heavy glow effect. Then I kind of want to darken the right side, kind of creating a vignetting effect. I'm going to use a linear gradient for that, just targeting the very far right side here. And to darken this area, I'm not going to drop the exposure since this will result in losing details in the darkest parts. Instead, I'm simply going to drop the whites. And as I drop the whites, you can see I'm creating some kind of shadow effect on here. So again, this will help to create depth for the image and just make the tree look a little more interesting in my opinion. So next up, I kind of want to dodge the image a little bit. What I mean by that is I want to target those green highlights right there in the center of all the trees and plants that got hit by the sunlight and make them slightly brighter. This is a more complex selection. So what we want to do is to create a new mask. Here we are choosing a color range mask. I'm going to click somewhere right here in the brightest spot of the foreground. This will give us a rough selection, but we can tweak it a little more by bringing down the refine slider because I really only want to target those highlights, not the green shadows in the foreground. We could also say subtract, choose a linear gradient and just create one like this to make sure none of those shadows in the foreground are selected. Then to make this area brighter, we can simply bring up the exposure and thus we are dodging the area. We can also bring up the whites. I do think I wanna play around with the temperature. Let's increase it a bit, giving this part more of a yellowish look. Wonderful. At the same time, we can not only dodge the image, but we can also burn it. For that effect, I'm going to use another color range mask. This time I'm clicking in the blue of the sky, just like that. And I'm going to say subtract and choose a linear gradient. And I take away a part from the left side because I only really want this part of the sky to be darker. So with the selection setup, I'm going to drop the exposure. It's really important not to drop it too much since this effect will be quite visible along the edge of the tree. So right about here, I think looks fine. Let's keep it that way. At this point, I'm still not quite satisfied with the highlights in the center. Let me use another color range mask. Again, I'm clicking right in here. And let me try something else. I wanna hit those three dots, choose intersect mask with and choose radial gradient. And I'm just creating a radial gradient, which covers the center part I want to change. And with this mask, again, I wanna bring up the exposure. I also wanna bring up the whites. Let's increase the temperature once more and even the saturation. That looks great. So I think that should be enough for the masking for now. Let's take a look at the image with the basic adjustments right here. And here it is with the masks applied. As you can see, that's quite a big difference. And I'm also really happy with how things are looking. However, we can do a little bit of color grading. So let's go right into the color mixer tab. I do wanna work on the hue first. And what I want to do here is to just introduce some more autumn color tones. Since at the moment it does look more like a summer shot. How can we do that? We are simply going to use the hue and bring down the green slider. This will turn all the green color tones more into a yellow color range. So somewhere around here, we can do the same with the yellow slider here. We might want to be a little more careful. Just bring it down a little bit. And I'm also going to bring down the orange slider. As I bring it down, you can see this pretty much only affects this tree right here. I'm going to bring it down because if I would not bring it down, we have the same color all over the place, which looks a little bit unnatural. So I wanna bring it down 
and does just add a little more color to this image. I'm also going to head into the saturation tab and I'm going to bring up the orange saturation and let's bring up blue as well, just to make the sky a little more vibrant. We can also work on the luminance. For example, we can make the warmer tones a little brighter by bringing up the luminance slider for orange, yellow, and green. And we can make the sky a little darker by bringing down the blue luminance slider. Perfect. Now let's also take a look into the calibration tab here. As I do for most of my images, I'm going to bring down the blue primary hue just because I like the effect of it. And I'm also going to bring up the saturation here. Wonderful. And with this out of the way, the last thing we can do in Lightroom is to go into the details tab to apply a little bit of sharpening. And as always, I'm going to drop the radius. I'm increasing the details. I'm going to apply some masking while holding down the Alt key. And then let's apply some more sharpening. Done. And that's it for creating this dreamy autumn scene using Adobe Lightroom Classic. As always, if you have questions about editing, feel free to ask in the comments. Otherwise, I hope this video was interesting and helpful. So thanks for watching and see you guys next time.